Okay, again, this is April 12th, 2017, Typography Spring Class, and we are uh, we just covered uh, how to create a booklet, a small hang tag booklet in InDesign and how to print it, and now we're getting ready to create a new document that is going to be a gatefold document. So I'm going to use the same size I used before. You do not have to use the size. This is just random. So you want to make those uh, decisions yourself. I think earlier I did like a two and a half by three. So I'm going to do two or two by three. I can't remember. I'm going to do a two inch booklet. Each, each little fold is going to be about two inches wide as far as a little page. And the height I'm going to do uh, three and a half inches. And it would help if, uh, let's do two and a half inches. Let's do 2.5 in there. Proportionally, that looks a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to knock down my uh, margins a little bit. And I certainly do want to set my bleed to nine picas. If you wanted a number of columns, you're more than welcome to do that. You can always change your gutter size too, by the way. Usually gutters are pica, but in a miniature book, because things are going to be a little bit smaller, they might be a little bit lesser than. So you can change your gutter size to be a little bit more proportional to the fact that this is a small, tiny little book. Okay. You do want facing pages turned on here as well, similar to what we had on our other book. Now I'm going to hit OK. Now the key to this one is in your Pages panel. Now normally on a roll fold or gate fold, we would not, this is, pardon me, a gate fold, not a roll fold. On a gate fold, we normally would not put page numbers in. So I'm not going to bother going back to the master and putting page numbers in. But I do need to share with you the one tiny little secret that's going to make the big difference here, and that's how to make sure that you can get one page laid next to the other, and another one laid next to that, and another one laid next to that. Now, if I add four pages, you see that they have placed the odd numbers on the right, even numbers on the left, and it starts with an odd number and ends with an even number. Now we actually need this to be an eight page document, so let me go ahead and add more. All right, now the problem here though is I need this to be four pages across and basically a four page spread. Well, this only does two page spreads. Well, I'm gonna try to drag a page up next to this one. Well, nothing happens. It keeps fussing with me, okay? It will not let me do it. It just moves pages around when I do that. Okay, so here's the sneaky little secret that a lot of people do not know. I'm going to double click on page one. I'm going to then right click on page one. And this simple feature that many people don't know what it's for, we're going to uncheck it. And that is allow document pages to shuffle. Not allow selected spread to shuffle, but allow document pages to shuffle uncheck that one. Now when I pull a page up next to page one and I wait for an ending bracket to show up, it will put that page next to page one. Now notice how we have a center spine. I'm not sure if you can tell but there's a little line that goes down these. We want two to the left and two to the right. Currently we have two to the right. Let me see if I can drag one to the left. Sure enough, let me see if I could drag another one to the left of that. Sure enough. So basically, you're waiting for a little bracket symbol to pop up. And when it pops up, you let go of the mouse. Oh my god, that was easy. But most people don't know this exists. And they make their lives a living hell trying to do all these measurements and trying to get this all separated out perfectly. And what took me less than, if I weren't teaching, it would take me less than 20 seconds. What took me less than 20 seconds takes most individuals at least 20 minutes to try to figure out if they're doing it the long way. The long way is the wrong way. Okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and put page numbers on this just so when I print it, there is something there to see in the printing. Okay, you do not normally put page numbers on these. So let me insert um, a page number. I'm using the keyboard shortcut. We covered this in the previous video. I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts here that I've covered in other videos. In fact, I really would like to make this much larger. So let me make these page numbers a lot larger. 
Now we can see in my layout, when I click on the regular pages, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, how would we print this? Well, before I print it, there are a couple things that we need to keep in mind. Maybe. I'm going to see if it puts crop marks. I know it's going to put crop marks out to the upper uh, and lower corners, but I don't know if it's going to put any crop mark between the pages. So that's the thing I'm a little worried about. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to manufacture some. So that way when I am printing this, I know where to score where the fold goes. So let's talk about the printing for just a moment. We're going to go to File. We are not going to go to Print Booklet. This is already in the right order. It's just going to be a front to back printing. So I'm going to go File and Print in this case. File and Print. I certainly, in the Print dialog box, will want spreads on. It considers that entire line of pages a spread. This is also called an island spread, in case anybody wants to know. When you have more than a two-page spread in a spread, you know, kind of like uh, the old magazines in the center, they have, have a center fold, so to speak, and they pull out. Um, that is also known as an island spread. So I am going to uh, see that the preview is obviously a problem. It's going off the 8.5 by 11 page. So I need to go to the setup, and I need to make this landscape not portrait. I need to make sure the page position is centered so that when it prints front to back, it registers. I also need to go to Marks and Bleeds and turn on Crop Marks. I'm not so worried about registration marks. Um, actually, I don't see that it's putting any crop marks above the pages, so I may have to manually create some. Now, I'll do that in just a moment. If you put registration marks on, it will put at least where the center is, but it does not give us the separation between pages. I'm going to turn registration marks off. Now I'm going to go ahead and complete setting up my printing here, uh, make sure everything looks good. I want it double sided, but then I'm going to save this as a preset because I do see that I'm going to have to manufacture some crop marks. It's not showing up in the preview. So I'm double checking things, making sure it's two sided, making sure it's color. Uh, if I were printing on a heavier cardstock, we'll talk about that on another day, but um, Right now, we're just getting things ready. I'm going to save the preset. And I'm going to call this uh, Project 6 Gatefold. By the way, your roll fold, assuming it goes from left to right, is identical to this. If your roll fold, however, goes calendar style, we'll talk about that when we move on to the calendar, uh, the calendar way to do it. And also, for accordion fold, this is the way we would do an accordion fold. So I need to say gate, uh, roll, hor actually, I'll put H, um, H O R roll for horizontal. And this would also, let's see, gate, roll, and accordion. I'll, I'll say horizontal accordion. That's a long name. So this covers gate folding. A horizontal roll fold, meaning it goes from left to right and opens left to right or right to left. And it also does a horizontal accordion. Okay, this is for all three. I'm going to hit OK. And then I am not going to print it. Okay, actually, I'm going to hit print and I'm going to get it canceled just to make sure that uh, it sticks. Sometimes I like to do that. Oops, I just told it to print and I didn't mean to. But I'm going to save this. Oops, get to InDesign. And I'm going to call this um, Project 6. And if you do, you know, you can call it Gate, Roll, or Accordion. Gate, Roll, Accordion. Depending on which one you're doing. And it's horizontal. Now, because in the preview, and since I printed it too, oh my gosh, I put crop marks in there. Yay, it didn't show it in the preview. 
But uh, I know you can't see this on the video. Oh, we have a problem. <laughs> I have to show you one more thing on the printing. Uh, we do have crop marks that show up between every page that tells us where to score it and where to fold it. Yay, we don't have to draw them. Guys, it sucks having to draw them because then I have to teach you how to print an offset outside and all that's horrible. But you'll notice that my page numbers are upside down on one side. Oops. <laughs> See how pages one, two, and well, let's say one, two, and three are straight up, but five, six, and seven are all upside down. We have to tell this to flip it on the short side of the paper. It flips it on the long side when it does double-sided printing. That's why it's upside down on one side. Okay, or maybe it flipped on the short side. I'll, have, I'll just do the opposite of what it did. Okay, so print it upside down on one side. And you'll get this and you'll go, why is it doing this? I don't understand. So here is what happens when, what you have to do when that happens. You go to file and print. And in the printer area where you have all those Xerox features, where it says two-sided printing, when it prints upside down on the other side, you choose two-sided print on, or flip on short edge. Oh, okay. Now I'm gonna hit print. I'm gonna save the preset. I'm gonna save over the uh, project six preset I already created here. Gate, horizontal roll, and horizontal accordion. Hit okay. Do I want to replace that name? Yes, with the name it already has. And I'm going to print it just to see if it worked. Okay, so uh, if you have vertical pages, you have to, uh, and they're all together in accordion style, you have to flip on the short edge. I'm going to hit yes, and we'll see what happens. Should be fine. Now I'm going to save that. I worked really hard on this. I'm going to save it. I'm just setting up a document. I'm not even designing. You know, setting up the document, like I said, that is a huge battle if you don't have this set up right. You are literally, as my grandpa used to say, you are pissing up the rope, which means you ain't getting a whole lot done. You're making a mess if you don't start out on, a good, on the good side of this. You don't start out real well. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, and four. Correct reading. When we flip it over, five, six, seven, and eight are in the right place too. Hooray! Now that will work for gatefold because all we would do is just fold it this way, right? It will work for a roll fold because we would just go rolling it as we fold it. And it would also work for accordion fold, which is all the same, you know, just, you just fold it in accordion style and it would work that way. Okay, so this works for three different folds, three different methods. That was nice. I killed, I killed three folds with one demo. I'm going to save that. That way it saves those print presets. And then I'm going to stop this recording so that we can, can then, oh, you know what? I'm not going to stop the recording because this is awesome. I can turn this into calendar style right now. What? I can. Here's how you do it. This is a very little known secret that I just learned right before class. I was waiting on folks to get here, so I thought I better look this up because I can't remember how to do it. I don't even know it's possible to do calendar format in InDesign. So I'm double clicking on page one. You don't have to have page numbers in here. It's just already what I have. And I'm going to right click on this spread or on that page. It really doesn't matter. I'm on this spread. And I'm going to go down to page attributes, rotate spread view. And I will do this 90 degrees clockwise. What? Now I will want to, let me see if I can do that rotate view here as well. Maybe not so much. Yeah, I can. I will also rotate my documents. Uh, uh, my, um, what are these are? These, these uh, elements. So I want to do a rotation of these elements. And I will, now I don't believe I can rotate my uh, grid. That's the only bad thing about this. But now when I double click on pages one and uh, that the next spreads, you can see that I am in calendar style. 
Now, calendar format, I only need page one and two. But this is like, this would be for a roll fold that's uh, vertical. So if you're doing a vertical roll fold, a vertical gate fold, or a vertical accordion fold, this is how you would do that. If you're doing calendar style and you only need two pages, we'll get rid of this, the rest of these pages and just put two pages per. Okay, so this is an accordion. Oh, look at five, six, seven, and eight. They're being bad. Well, I double click on page five, right click, go to page attributes, go to rotate spread view, 90 degrees clockwise. Oh my gosh. Most InDesign users do not know this exists, including, I knew it existed because I, I remember doing it last year, but I couldn't remember how to do it, so I had to look it up again today. All right, now I'm going to save this as Project 6, Gate Roll Accordion, but instead of horizontal, I'm going to do vertical. Now, to print this, we would do the same thing that we did before. File and print, not print booklet. And it's going to, in essence, do the same sort of printing on this, okay? Uh, if it prints upside down, we would have to choose the other option, uh, which would be flip on the long edge. But uh, we'd have to test that and find out. You guys want me to test that and find out so you don't have to spend a dime doing it? I'll, I'll, I'll see if it prints backwards. We'll see. Uh, Xerox features. Right now it's two-sided printing. I'll just leave it on just the regular one. We'll see if it prints upside down. If it does, then we know we need to choose, choose the other one. And I'd rather me do that and mess up than you have to pay for a mess up. So that's what I'm doing right now. So we'll see if using the default method uh, is going to work. This was assuming, oh, probably won't work because I didn't even use my Project 6 default or uh, preset. So this is going to come out two separate pages because I didn't use my preset. Let me try that again. Oh, no, I did fine. Sure. I'm printing good. So that was fine. Do not flip on the short edge if you're doing a vertical gate fold, roll fold, or accordion fold, okay? Or even calendar for all that matters. These are fine. It's all very exciting, isn't it? All right. Now, the last one will be making the calendar style because this is a little more pages than what we need for calendar. So the calendar style, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on page one I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to turn on allow document pages to shuffle. It says, do you want to maintain the current number of pages in these spreads? No. Look what it did. Now I am going to have to go to each of these spreads and make sure in the page attributes that the rotated spread view of 90 degrees clockwise is selected. Because when it separates it out, it doesn't know that that's what I want. And the same thing with the last page. I want to do that as well. Oops, excuse me, let me do it here. There we go. And you do want page one separate from page eight because you're going to print booklet on this one. Okay, so this is different printing. So let me save this as calendar. All calendars are vertical, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Well, not really, but if they're not ver calendar style, they're booklet style. So Project 6 calendar style. And now I'm going to print it to see if this actually functions properly as a calendar. So this will be file print booklet this time. You want it to put page 1 next to page 8 and page 2 next to page 7 and so on. So file print booklet. I'm going to preview this. 1 and 8. Awesome. Now they're not centered though. Oops. Now you go to print settings and I want to, let me go ahead and print blank pages because I may have some blanks here. Actually I don't have any blanks so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to set up, I'm going to go to letter, I'm going to tell it to center it. I do want my crop marks and so I know where to fold my registration marks. I'm going to go to printer and Xerox features and I want two-sided printing, 
Now, do I want it to flip on the short edge or not? I don't know. That always confuses me, so I'll try it on regular two-sided. If it prints upside down on one side, I will choose the other one. We have a question, Icon. Print blank pages. If I do have in my document any blank pages, and in demos, oftentimes I don't put it, you know, I'm not designed yet. So in my demonstrations, oftentimes I have to click on blank, print blank pages for this to function because I have no design on my pages. But, you know, there are lots of booklets that are produced where the back few pages are blank. If that's the case, I would click on print blank pages. Okay, now I do want to save this as a print preset so um, I can use it again. So I'm going to double check and make sure everything is good. Um, I was kind of in a hurry to get hit the print button, but let me make sure that everything is good. It looks good, except it might print upside down. I don't know. So let me save the preset. This is Project 6 calendar style. Calendar. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and print it and hope that it does not print upside down on the other side. And hopefully it comes out right. It'll only come out in two pages, I think. Two pieces of paper. upside down. So here I have uh, one and eight. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. One and eight here, two and seven there. Oops, I got upside down this. I got upside down syndrome. So let me go back into this. So if you're doing calendar style when you're printing, printing booklet, you want to go in those print settings. And you want to go to the printer area to those Xerox features. And you want to flip, two-sided flip on short edge. Small detail. Most people don't even know that's there. And hit print. I'm going to save the preset over the calendar preset I already created. And hit yes. And hit OK. And print. And this one should work. You guys just learned a ton about a lot of different formats. Most students graduating from Ivy Tech do not know this. And how do I know that? Because I teach, I'm the only one that teaches portfolio. And I see every person through the end. And when I tell them, oh, well, you know, it's just calendar style stuff you guys learned in typography. And they're like, no, I didn't learn that in typography. I didn't have you. Uh, we have uh, sometimes anywhere from three or four other people who teach typography. Now you will see now that one and eight are next. Oh, this is a problem. One and eight are next to each other. I just identified a problem. And if I fold this like so, with like a calendar, there's our front page one. Hold on. In the right order. <gasps> This was not as simple as I thought. Calendar style is the most difficult style. So you have page one here, and then page two is like, oh my gosh, it's on the wrong side. Oh no, I do need that upside down. Let's try the other one I printed. But I need my stuff right side up. Oh, this is get this gets challenging. Oh, let me get my head wrapped around this real quick. Oh my. Well, you know, it's just a problem. We're just here to solve problems. Anybody ask you what a designer does? Just give them the short version. We solve problems. Because we're constantly, constantly solving problems, whether it's printing problems or whatever. Okay, so what I saw earlier, I was thinking of a booklet. I wasn't thinking calendar. Something came up upside down and I was freaking out. So what I did before actually was okay. Because when you actually fold them, when you do one, two, three, four, five, we got six and seven and eight. Oh, yeah, we want it upside down on the other side for a calendar. 
I'm so unused to that. So we need to go back. I was very convincing when I was thinking I was right. So I need to go back to print booklet and I need to make sure that we set the printer to what I thought was incorrect, which was just regular two-sided printing, which flips on the long edge. We want that. Oops, shoot. I want to save that print setting. Ugh. Save the preset, rather. Make sure it's still good. Yep, print it. Save the preset. Save over the calendar. Hit OK. Hit yes, I want to save it. Hit OK. I'm going to print it just one more time for posterity. I'm not wasting a lot of ink here because I, I don't have a lot of design. Um, so it's very good that I'm doing this because I don't want you spending all this money screwing it all up. I can screw it up for you, find out what works, and then I'm going, here's what works. Now, I'm not going to give you my InDesign files. That's, that's, not, that's not how that works. I never do that. You aren't going to learn if I give you everything. Practice makes perfect. And I give you stuff, you, you aren't practicing nothing. All right, so let's try this again. Right out of the printer, I'm going to fold it in half, top to bottom, and let's see if it works. I like to fold it straight, but one would be the cover, two and three are working out just fine, they're right reading, four and five are correct reading, so are six and seven, and so are eight. So I'm sorry I screwed up on that, waste a little time, I got confused because I'm normally printing booklets, not calendars, so my head took a second to get around that. All right, that concludes five different formats that you might be using for your booklet hang tag for project six. You guys okay? If there's something that you're doing special and I didn't cover it, then I need to figure out what you're doing so I can help you get on the right track. Let's stop this video.